Hello everyone, Timmer Game here, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you another very, very nice M4 gameplay on the map Sea Town in a ground war domination. But before I get into that, I'd just like to apologise for not uploading a video yesterday. I was uh, pretty busy yesterday. I played football in the morning. I had to go out and do some shopping, and in the evening I went out and went round to a, a mate's house. So I didn't really have enough time to uh, upload a video. But what I'm going to do to make it up for you guys is uh, either tonight or tomorrow night I'm going to be doing some live streaming. Now um, I'm not too sure what I'm going to be live streaming yet. If you have any uh, specific preference don't be afraid to leave it in the comments and I'll see if I can get that game in for you at some point but you know I haven't done a, a FIFA 12 live stream yet so I was thinking about doing that either today or tomorrow at some point so keep an eye out I will upload a video into YouTube so you don't have to do anything and I'll link my twitch.tv account in the description of that so you can come along and watch that but you know I just want to talk about the gameplay a little bit today because this is building on the M4 um, gameplay that I uploaded on Bootleg, showing you how to use the weapon on Bootleg. And Sea Town is quite a similar map to Bootleg. You've got a lot of open areas around the outsides of the map, but if you get into the middle of the map around Market and Bedom, it really does narrow up and tighten up. And that is how I decide whether I like maps really. It's whether I can pick up any weapon in the roster, bring it into a, a map, and do well with it. And Sea Town is definitely a map you can do that on. But as you can see from the title, this is another I hate my team episode and now this is a series where I go on absolute tears but unfortunately the matchmaking system has decided to lump me with all of the the biggest ne'er-do-wells invalids and morons they could possibly find so I end up losing the game even though I have stomped the enemy team ran around got as many objectives as possible and really just tried my best to win but unfortunately it doesn't happen all the time you can't win every game and it's still a pretty interesting game to watch in the background but like I was saying before I moved on about a little bit about the title and that Sea Town is a very, very nice map. It's possibly my, in fact, it probably is my favourite map in Modern Warfare 3. Because, like I was saying, you can use any weapon in the in the game and do well on this map. I've uploaded striker gameplays on this map, assault rifle, SMG, you know, LMG gameplays, everything. You can use pretty much any weapon on this map and do well. But if you're looking to manoeuvre yourself around the map, be a little bit more aggressive, what I recommend is using an assault rifle. Because occasionally when you're using an SMG or a shotgun on this map, you get into areas of the map where you're not really suited to be. For example, the road um, overlooking the red brick house, which is on the, the left hand side of where I'm looking now, you see a lot of people camp up there with sniper rifles. And if you don't have an assault rifle to, to try and counter them, that part of the map is pretty much uh, left out for you. Also, if you go round Adam, you know, there's a lot of open space around Adam. You get people camping the tower on one side and the red two story on the other. And if you go anywhere in and around Adam, you're in trouble. So if you are using a close range weapon, I really do recommend sticking around C because it gives you a lot more tactical flexibility. And if you are struggling, you can just dive around the corner back to B, get undercover by the market and rest up. Or if you're on C spawn, you can pull back into the library or try and escape in the alleys where I am now. So it's a really nicely balanced map and the objectives are pretty well balanced. The B Dom is incredibly well contested on this map because both of the spawns are fairly evenly spaced away from B. So you get a massive scrum in and around B a lot of the time. So the real key to doing well in domination on this map, as it is in most maps, is holding that B Dom down. And that's something that my team really, really struggled to do. Because you'd think with nine players looking in and around objectives that you're going to do quite a, a decent job at holding them. But unfortunately it wasn't to be. But what I like to do on Sea Town is if we are beginning to struggle a bit and the team's getting a little bit overwhelmed and you, you're trapped in um, either A side or C side, what I like to do is try and flank round and capture the other external objective because that flips your spawn. And the whole point of domination is spawn management. If you can control where the enemy are going to be, what direction they're going to be running from and all of that sort of stuff. How did that guy not die? You're going to have a much better time of it because you see a lot of people, for example, in this gameplay here, somebody ran off and triple capped um, the enemy team. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, oh, triple cap, you're going to win the game faster, aren't you? In Ground War, I really don't recommend triple capping at all unless you are playing a bunch of absolute morons because, as you saw, what happened was as soon as we triple capped the enemy, they started randomly spawning because in Domination, uh, the enemy team and your team ha tend to, I mean it doesn't happen all of the time, but 90% of the time you will spawn in near or very close to an objective that your team controls. But as soon as you um, 
don't have an objective to control. This isn't like Demolition where you'll just keep spawning in the set spawn locations all of the game. You will begin to randomly spawn pretty much all over the map. And that is a really, really dangerous thing in Domination. Because like I was been saying in uh, commentary I uploaded a couple of days ago... And in this commentary here, domination is all about managing spawns. And if you can control where the enemy is, you are going to win so, so often. Then, if you're just going to be charging around like a lunatic, trying to capture everything. Because you can see here, we were in a really strong position. We had C and B locked down. We had everyone in carpets, which is the, the two-story balcony side of um, B, overlooking market. We had everyone in there under control, defending it nicely. No pressure whatsoever. And we were just sitting back. Managing everything, making sure everything was okay, and getting our point streaks in. That's what the great thing about Domination is. It rewards the team that can control the spawns better. But as soon as that one teammate had a bit of a mad one, rushed off into the enemy spawn and captured A, whilst he might have gotten 150 points at the cap, or however many it is, I can't remember off the top of my head, you know, it's going to completely flip everything up. Because as soon as the enemy team has no objectives it controls, they will spawn in any free space in the map. So they will come behind you, to your left, to your right, and you have literally no control over it. So if you are looking to win games and win them quickly, hold two objectives and only two. And keep the enemy at arm's reach at an external objective. So... That's my big tip of playing Sea Town. Do not triple cap. I mean, that, that's just a general tip for in, in all of Domination and all of the maps in all of the Call of Duties. Triple capping unless you've got a very, very good team or you're up against a very, very bad team. As I can't believe I survived that dead man's hand there. You're gonna, you're really gonna get bitten on the backside if you do that. But yeah, you know, I just want to talk a little bit about the the class setup I'm using here. You know, I said in a, a previous video that I really didn't like the H6 Overwatch, and I, I still don't. But I found it does work a lot better in ground war than it does in 6v6. I think because it has a lot more targets. And if you keep moving around the map, occasionally Stinger missiles can miss it. So I've seen a couple of Stinger missiles, you know, get slipped by my Overwatch because I was moving around the map. So. It isn't a great kill streak. I would much rather run the Reaper. But the benefit of it is, is that when you do run the Reaper, you're forced to get a laptop out and control it manually. With these, this kill streak setup, you've got the Predator missile, the Overwatch, and the Pavlo. The only time you're going to be spending in the laptop is about three or four seconds calling your Predator in. And a Predator missile is is a fantastic kill streak. I mean, with Hardline, you can only you know only four kills to get it. And in a ground war lobby, you can get quads, quintuples, you know, lots of easy kills with that thing. And it just helps you on your way to your higher kill streaks. So, like a 5, 9, 12, or somewhere around there, that's always a good setup to run if you're being a little bit more aggressive. And if you are being a little bit more aggressive, I always like to run a silencer on my primary weapon. Because it just enables you to stay off the radar a bit. Most of the time, I don't like running Assassin. The only times I run Assassin, and ugh, I can't believe that guy survived. I heard like the fourth or fifth bullet thud into him there and thought I was going to get him, but unfortunately, nothing happened. But you know, if you don't run a silencer on your primary weapon, you pop up on the map all of the time you pull the trigger, and it just attracts a lot of attention to you. And in Ground War, it's such a, a hectic game mode, you want as little attention on you as possible, because there are so many enemies around the map for you to shoot at. It's not like in a 6v6 or a team attack where having an unsilenced weapon can draw the enemy towards you for more kills. You are not going to struggle to find gunfights in Ground War. So what I always like to do is run a silenced assault rifle or a silenced SMG. Like I said in my previous videos, I don't like running silent shotguns. It gives it too much of a range hit to a weapon which doesn't really have pretty any good range at all. But run a silenced assault rifle, whatever your favourite one is. And you know, like I was saying, the M4 is a great weapon. It just feels right and I don't know what it is I just pick that weapon up and I feel confident about it there's not any times where I sit there and think oh the M4 has let me down there it's either my aim or the guy's got a jump on me or it's a bit like dodgy connection or the spawns or whatever many of the hundreds of reasons why you die in Call of Duty but if you are using that silenced assault rifle it can keep you off the map for longer and if you are kept off the map you can just dictate the flow of play yourself and that's what I really like about a silencer. You get a little bit more of a control over when you meet your engagements. Because if the enemy don't know where you are, no, they're not going to be looking for you. And that's the big thing. You know, People rely on UAV a lot in this game. And I think UAV is a fantastic point streak. And I always like a couple of my teammates to run it in every game. Because even if people are using Assassin, you can still get the basic idea of where the enemy are through a UAV. But... 
you know, if you are using a silencer and the enemy aren't running UAV, you're practically invisible. You know, the enemy can't see you, and when they're not looking for you, not expecting you to be there, they're not going to try and hunt you down. So that ability just to sit back, have a bit of a chill in the corner to reload, get some health back, you know, regenerate your health, calm down, and then go back into the gunfight, that is a fantastic attribute, and that's something that a silencer gives you. And the only thing that really can compete with that, sorry, is Assassin. And you know, I think Assassin's a horribly overpowered perk. The only time I ever use Assassin is on a specialist and when I'm using a sniper rifle because that's the whole point of being, you know, being a sniper, to stay off the radar and to be a proper sniper, not some quick scoper who throws his scope up and hopes for the best. You know, using a silencer with the M4 or whatever assault rifle you want enables you just to be a little calmer and that's why I like using an MP9 as my secondary weapon because every now and again even with the silencer you are going to be a little bit overwhelmed and you do need that weapon with that little bit of close quarters punch just in case the enemy catches you aware. and that's why I really like using the MP9 with extended mags because it fulfills that role very very nicely but unfortunately as you can see from the score about to pop up here after I get dead man's handed for the final kill we lost 197 200. I went 70 and 10 and got 5,000 points, capped as many flags as possible, but just that one mistake from the teammate, you know, gonna triple cap when we have control of the spawns, flipped everything around, put us on the back foot, and despite the best efforts of like the top two or three players, they couldn't drag the rest of the team through, so unfortunately, we ended up losing that pretty tight game, and it was I was pretty gutted at the time as well, but never mind. I really hope you've enjoyed the gameplay, guys. A lot more talk about the M4. It's a weapon that I think is pretty under underappreciated, so if you guys haven't given it a go, this is more further evidence that it wasn't a fluke gameplay, and that this weapon really is a reliable one to use. So guys, once again, I really hope you've enjoyed watching the gameplay, and have a fantastic day.